Hi friends, I welcome you all in this exciting training session being conducted by TNV Academy. Today in this session, we will discuss about Clause 4 of ISO 45001-2018, which talks about context of the organization. So let's get going and start our discussion. Let me explain you that what we will be covering in this session. The clause 4 of ISO 45001-2018 has total 4 subclauses, that is 4.1, 4.2, 4.3 and 4.4. In this session, we will cover the requirements of clause 4 of ISO 45001-2018, which talks about the context of the organization along with subclause 4.1, which talks about understanding the organization and its context. Now, let us understand about the internal references taken by clause 4 and subclause 4.1 of ISO 45001-2018. As far as clause 4 and subclause 4.1 are concerned, it does take reference from Annex A defined within the standard. Annex A lists out the definitions and meanings of the terms used in this international standard so that no misinterpretation is done while implementing the requirements of ISO 45001-2018. Now, let me tell you what are the takeaways of this session. At the end of this chapter, you will be able to understand what is context of the organization? What are the factors an organization has to consider while implementing the requirements of Clause 4 of ISO 45001-2018? How the identification of these factors helps in correct implementation of the standard? How the identified factors are documented by an organization for future reference? So, let's begin our discussion with a basic definition of context of the organization. Context of the organization means that what an organization is all about and what it is intended to do, that is, the nature of its business. It is the operational business environment of an organization that is actually determined and impacted by external factors such as legal, financial, social, regulatory, cultural, etc. Along with several internal factors such as structure of the organization, its governance procedures and capabilities of its resources. Context of the organization also depends on the requirements of the interested parties. We need to understand that both the external and internal factors addressed within the organization can highly impact and influence the strategic plans of an organization. Hence, while understanding the concept of context of the organization, it is very important that an auditor should identify, determine and understand the external and internal factors carefully. Once the context, issues and interested parties are determined, organization should establish such mechanisms that monitoring and reviewing of these requirements is done regularly and at periodic intervals. Also, once an organization has established the context, if its operation, it easily identifies its strengths, weakness, the threats to the business model and future opportunities. Let us now discuss the requirement of subclause 4.1 of ISO 45001-2018 in detail. The subclause 4.1 states that the organization shall determine external and internal issues that are relevant to its purpose and that affects its ability to achieve the intended outcomes of its occupational health and safety management system. The subclause 4.1 of ISO 45001-2018 focuses on understanding the organization, that is, what it does, how it does, 
and what are the factors that can affect its ability to manage its occupational health and safety responsibilities to achieve its desired outcomes the desired objectives of occupational health and safety can be improving the organization's health and safety performance meeting its compliance obligations achieving its health and safety objectives the organization must understand the internal and external issues that can impact in a positive or negative manner on its health and safety performance including organizational culture and structure and the external environment including cultural social political legal financial technological economic market competition and natural factors of significance to its performance the company will be required to identify all relevant internal and external issues including conditions characteristics or changing circumstances that can affect its occupational health and safety management system and then address those that require further attention now let us discuss what can be the internal and external issues that can impact the organizational occupational health and safety management system internal issues can be the following within an organization point 1 the size and complexity of the organization and the nature of the activities carried out point 2 the strategic direction of the organization its policies and objectives point 3 organizational governance and structure roles and accountabilities point 4 the capability and capacity of the organization in terms of resources knowledge and competence for example capital employee competencies processes systems and technologies point 5 information systems information flows and decision making processes both formal and informal and the time frame within which they are accomplished point 6 the process for introducing new products materials services tools software premises and equipment point 7 organizational style and the health and safety culture of the organization point 8 the form and extent of contractual relationships including for example outsource activities point 9 working time arrangements and point 10 working conditions while if we list down the external issues then they can be the following political an organization should know what political issues it can face which can impact the organizational objectives and outcomes for example any specific policy change by the government in a sector that can impact investment or growth of an organization economical the organization should identify that how does the economics of the current market and the supply chain impact its operation sociological the organization should know how the society or audience is changing and affecting its business example can be a group of staff that have less regard for a new working hour policy introduced which creates a negative impact on the organization technological the organization should identify that the regular technological changes are creating issues for the occupational health and safety outcomes legislative many times fails to implement an effective ohs management system because it was not able to identify the applicable legislations and regulatory requirements and could not implement them relationship with contractors suppliers partners and other external interested parties an understanding of the organization and its context can be achieved at a strategic level by using techniques such as strengths weaknesses opportunities 
and threats, SWOT analysis, and political, economic, social, technological, legal, and environmental pastel analysis. However, the process adopted by the organization to develop an understanding of its context should guide its efforts to plan, implement, maintain, and continually improve its occupational health and safety management system. It is recommended that the organization documents and periodically updates the process and its results as needed. The result can be used to assist the organization in Point 1. Setting the scope of its occupational health and safety management system. Point 2. Determining the risk and opportunities that need to be addressed. Point 3. Developing or enhancing its occupational health and safety policy. Point 4. Establishing its occupational health and safety objectives. Point 5. Fulfilling its compliance obligations. So friends, I hope you are clear with the requirements of subclause 4.1 of ISO 45001-2018. Now, let's move forward and discuss the other important components of this session. So now, we will learn about the mandatory documents that an organization has to maintain while meeting the requirements of subclause 4.1. As far as subclause 4.1 of ISO, 45001-2018 is concerned, an organization does not require a formal process or documented information to satisfy the requirements of this subclause. It just says that whatever approach the organization identifies to understand the context should be the best one and if the organization like, then it can document the same for future reference. And last but not the least, let us understand the common mistakes which auditors do while performing audit under the subclause 4.1 of ISO 45001-2018. Mistake number one, auditors ask irrelevant questions for the organization which does not relate with the organization to be audited. Mistake number two, sometimes auditors start thinking for the option while auditor need to understand the client process and to decide if the client can achieve the result of the MSS through their own process. Mistake number three, auditors start consulting activities. Mistake number four, auditors start expecting document and records in clause where this may not be mandatory requirement. Mistake number five, auditors start asking for documents that are not relevant to the requirements of the clause or standard. For example, GST registration, FSSAI registration, etc. Dear friends, we have now come to the conclusion of this training session. See you soon with an exciting new topic. Till then, goodbye.